The Thwaites Glacier in Antarctica is experiencing a significant and rapid melting process, commonly referred to as vigorous melting, which has earned it the ominous nickname of the Doomsday Glacier. Greetings everyone, today's video focuses on a research conducted by UC Irvine scientists, utilising data obtained from ICYE satellites. The study uncovers significant melting occurring at Antarctica's Thwaites Glacier, which has implications for global sea level rise estimations. It sheds light on the complex interaction between seawater and the glacier, resulting in dynamic transformations. These findings underscore the pressing requirement for additional research on Antarctic glaciers and emphasize the necessity of integrating ocean ice interactions into ice sheet models to enhance the accuracy of projections and devise effective strategies to mitigate the consequences of rising sea levels. Now, without any further delay, let us begin our discussion. According to a recently published study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, a team led by UC Irvine has found that the extensive interaction between ocean water and glaciers, a phenomenon observed in Antarctica and Greenland, leads to significant melting. This discovery suggests the need for a re-evaluation of projections regarding global sea level rise. The glaciologists utilised data collected during the months of March to June in 2023, which was obtained from Finland's ICE commercial satellite mission. These ICE satellites operate as a constellation in a polar orbit around the Earth, employing interferometer synthetic aperture radar, INSAR, to continuously track alterations on the planet's surface. By conducting multiple passes over a specific limited region, the spacecraft generated seamless data findings. In this particular investigation, the data revealed the fluctuations in elevation, contraction and curvature of Thwaites Glacier. Lead author Eric Rigno, a professor of Earth System Science at UC Irvine, expressed that the ICE data has provided an extensive collection of daily observations that align closely with tidal patterns. Previously, the availability of sporadic data made it challenging to comprehend the situation. However, with a continuous time series and a comparison to the tidal cycle, it becomes evident that seawater enters during high tide, recedes and occasionally moves further beneath the glacier, becoming trapped. Thanks to ICE, we now have the opportunity to witness this tidal dynamic for the very first time. A significant advancement has been made in our ability to observe and comprehend the intricate workings of nature thanks to the utilisation of radar satellite images from space. With the capability to provide precise measurements of the centimetre level through INSAR technology on a daily basis, we can now witness and analyse dynamic natural processes that were previously inaccessible in terms of detail and frequency. This breakthrough, as expressed by ICE Director of Analytics Michael Vorlesheim, co-author of the study, represents a remarkable leap forward in our understanding and modelling of these phenomena. Through this project, Rigno and his team have gained valuable insights into the dynamics of seawater beneath the Thwaites Glacier. By studying the interaction between seawater, fresh water from geothermal activity and friction, they have observed the accumulation and movement of water. This water either flows through existing channels or collects in cavities, exerting enough pressure to raise the ice sheet. According to Reno, in certain locations the water pressure is nearly equivalent to the pressure exerted by the ice above it, therefore only a slight increase in pressure is necessary to uplift the ice. As a result, the water is compressed sufficiently to raise a towering column of ice that surpasses half a mile in height. It is important to note that the seawater in question is not just any ordinary seawater. Over the course of many years, Rigno and his team have been diligently collecting data to demonstrate the effects of climate change on ocean currents. These currents play a crucial role in transporting warmer seawater towards the shores of Antarctica and other polar ice regions. The circumpolar deep water specifically is notable for its high salt content, which results in a lower freezing point. While fresh water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, salt water freezes at a slightly lower temperature of minus two degrees. This seemingly small disparity is significant enough to contribute to the rapid melting of basal ice, as highlighted in the study. 
According to Christine Dow, a co-author and professor at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada, the Thwaites Glacier in Antarctica is highly unstable and holds the potential to contribute to a 60 centimetre rise in sea level. The concern lies in the possibility that we are not fully grasping the rapid pace at which this glacier is transforming, a scenario that would have catastrophic consequences for coastal communities globally. Rigno expressed his hope and anticipation that the findings from this project will serve as a catalyst for additional exploration into the subglacial conditions of Antarctic glaciers, as well as inspire exhibitions featuring autonomous robots and increased satellite observations. He mentioned that there is great excitement among scientists to venture into these distant polar areas in order to collect valuable information and enhance our comprehension of ongoing events. However, there is a significant shortfall in funding. Despite the passage of time, our budget remains stagnant, with no increase in real dollars since the 1990s. It is imperative that we expand the community of glaciologists and physical oceanographers to promptly tackle the challenges related to observations. Presently, we find ourselves in a situation akin to climbing Mount Everest while wearing inadequate tennis shoes. According to Ringo, a senior project scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, this study will yield long-term advantages for the community of ice sheet modelers. He expressed his anticipation that incorporating this particular interaction between the ocean and ice into ice sheet models would greatly enhance their ability to accurately depict the events of the past 25 years, thereby increasing the level of certainty in their projections. Furthermore, he emphasized the importance of including the process outlined in the paper, which is often overlooked in current models, as it would significantly improve the alignment between model reconstructions and real-world observations. Achieving this outcome would be a major triumph. Regarding the time frame for irreversible ocean water intrusion, Dow stated that currently there is insufficient information to make a definitive statement. However, by enhancing our models and directing our research towards these crucial glaciers, we aim to establish a more precise timeline, spanning decades rather than centuries. This research will not only aid in adapting to fluctuating ocean levels, but also emphasize the importance of mitigating carbon emissions to avert the most severe outcome. Enrico Siracci, an assistant specialist in Earth System Science at UC Irvine and a NASA postdoctoral fellow, collaborated with Rigno, Dow and Volashim on this endeavor. Also involved were Bernd Scheuchel, a researcher in Earth System Science at UC Irvine, and Valentin Tolpikin from ECE. ECE, a company based in Finland with operations in multiple countries, including the United States, contributed to the project. Funding for the research was provided by NASA and the National Science Foundation. To support our channel's growth and ensure broader awareness, kindly hit the like and subscribe buttons. This will help us reach more individuals and disseminate valuable information. Thank you in advance.